final segment of my elimination diet. Now, the elimination diet, I have to say, there was a lot of time spent with me looking in my refrigerator in tears and my very, 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 very wonderful husband going to the grocery store for me to get what I wanted to eat. Um, multiple times, even a day sometimes, just because I had such a hard time having the food I wanted and could eat, that I was allowed to eat, that's the big thing. And because everything had to be so fresh, you can't buy a lot of it in advance. It's really hard to prep meals unless you prep them and then freeze them which I did have to do a lot of the time as far as preparing when I had a busy week and things. Uh, I, I definitely had to meal prep in some, some circumstances, but other circumstances it just wasn't possible. And it made it very difficult, I have to say. It was not fun. As you can see from this video here um, coming up, it was very stressful. I was out in, I can't remember, we, we, had, we had to go somewhere. So of course I have to pack all of my own food. And it's just me being very, very frustrated in the vehicle, uh, not being able to eat the things I want. And I'm pretty sure I was munching on a cucumber and salt because those are the only things I, could, I, I had with me that were easy to take and go were like little cucumbers and tomatoes and my salt shaker. And that was what I ate for most of the day, pretty much, because I couldn't eat out. I couldn't do anything. And we left really early in the morning, so it was just something easy and quick for me to grab. I think I probably had an apple in there, too. Um, I don't know if I actually show you what I was eating, but it just demonstrates my actual frustration in this whole thing. So check it out. Here's a vlog about my elimination diet really annoying because I can't eat meats and things that I'm used to. I'm a constant snacker. I don't normally eat huge meals. I just eat a lot throughout the day. And I love meat like prosciutto and the cold cuts and the pickles and everything else that that this is what I normally snack on um, a lot of the time. Meats <laughs> are them. And next, all right, so that video is just me being super frustrated. <laughs> and this next video is me just being super tired and still having to make food for myself because one of the, the hardest things for me in this whole process was keeping my weight up and the doctors were so adamant on me having boost and I think I actually might do a vlog on boost in general just because it's something that seems to be just keep coming up for me and I'll be going to see my dietitian uh, soon so I'll be able to talk to them about it but they're definitely heavy on the boost and it doesn't sit with my body. I've tried the juice, I've tried the shakes, I've tried it all and it just, it, I don't know if it has to do with like the taste or the texture or what it is. My body doesn't like it and I end up 90% of the time throwing it up again. So I tried like a couple days with Boost and it just didn't work so I didn't continue with it. Why, why would I continue to put something in my body that clearly my body doesn't like and it just keeps rejecting <laughs> it just makes me more tired and more sick and less likely to be able to keep weight on so I definitely had um, a, a struggle with trying to keep weight on and trying to find anything to just keep meat on me um, and keep calories in me because their recommendation for me to keep my weight up during this whole thing was drink boost from both my specialist, um, my specialist dietitian, they were all just like, you have to drink Boost. That's what you have to do, you have to drink Boost. And it was really, really hard for me. So I turned a lot to corn because I can't do potato very well and I can't do 
uh, rice, so corn was my staple, but I literally had to like cut all the cobs of corn, <laughs> all the kernels off the cob, and then cook them and, and blend them and turn them into things that I could use to make like a cake and things. So here's me making corn fritters and I'm just exhausted and tired and I still have to make all this stuff on top of everything else I'm doing just to help me keep weight on and it's just super tiring and check it out. This is what this is what the elimination diet kind of forces me to do. I just make lots and lots of corn fritters. Lots and lots of corn fritters. Just blended up corn and eggs. Some milk. Yay. Some vanilla. Food to get me through. All right. So those were just a few stressful moments during this elimination diet. Now I have to say I have it so well. Uh, I, people who can't afford food on their table could not afford to be able to have the luxury to do this type of testing, to be able to check your health and and be able to eliminate things from your diet it, it's a it's truly a luxury to be able to eliminate things it's it's crazy for me to say that but it really is and i am privileged enough to have been able to do that and and as stressful and as upset and as hard as it was for me i have it so much easier than so many other people so i just really need to state that. I really, really need to state that even though I, 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 I complain about it and I'm, I'm frustrated and, and it's this whole headache of things you can't eat and this mind play on, I was just, I wasn't able to eat for so long and now I just got things back and now you can't eat again and things like that. And there's just, I have it so much better than so many other people. So I really, really just need to stress that. <laughs> And so as you can see, I have quite a few different meals I was able to prepare for myself and I'll just show you a few here now. Um, here's a couple of the different things that I was able to come up with and kind of turned into fairly staple foods just because they were easy and quick, although none of this was quick and easy because it all meant that you had to process everything so it was a lot there was a lot there that's for sure so the first meal was stuffed pe uh, jalapeno peppers with cheese and stuffed chicken with cheese and peppers as long as the peppers weren't too hot our little one was this one was a honey garlic chicken with just plain steamed broccoli and corn uh, that i cut off the cob with some jalapenos in it. This is a stuffed chicken with cheese and peppers and I actually went and made a Caesar dressing from scratch. It is super difficult, but it was good. And these are my um, egg in a holes. They're my version of egg in a hole with a tomato. So I use the tomato, cut it out and put the egg in it. They're super yummy. This was a orange chicken that I had it was orange with just broccoli pretty yummy but all everything was made from scratch now this was my birthday dinner and my birthday dinner consisted of lobster and steak and cabbage and corn that my daughter and my mother made me uh, that was my one request was I didn't want to have to make myself dinner on this elimination diet for my birthday and they were super sweet and made it for me so that was my d birthday dinner our caprese salad is a staple i make the reduction from uh, balsamic glip and it is just delicious and easy in the summer and it was a go-to that's for sure now with going through this process and being finished now and going and shopping and 
being able to eat out, it has made me so much more aware of what I am okay with and what I'm exposing myself to. Now, I've been celiac since I was 10. So it's been 20 years now this year. I'm 30 this year. So it has been 20 years that I've been celiac at this point. And just going through this process again, having to eliminate I mean, we had a gluten-free house before this, but eliminating even more things and just learning and not eating out for so long has almost given me a little bit of PTSD um, in eating out and being stressed out about what's going in my food and what I can and cannot eat. It's really, really made me think hard about it and all the different things that I've gone through since being on this diet. Uh, I did a video recently of eating out and finding a crouton in my salad and me losing my mind because it's like, what do you do? That is, this whole process has really, really kind of shook me in, an, in a way I wasn't prepared for. I didn't think it was going to change my thinking as much as it did. And that's just something that has, it's a learning experience for me. So 20 years on, feeling celiac, going through this process, going through all these issues, it's, it's, it's learning and I'm still learning today and there is much more to come and I am going to share with you my experiences and my trials and <laughs> my tribulations and the things I go through because celiac is so much more common these days than it was when I was diagnosed. When I was originally diagnosed, no one even knew what that was. It, they didn't know it existed. They didn't know anything about it. And now there are so many things out there. And it's really, really hard to go through and figure out what's okay and what's not okay. Um, and it's, it's not, it's all of, it's almost about personal preference as well because you can eliminate literally everything and be so shut down and you can't go out you can't experience so many things because you might get a cross contamination or you might get sick so it's it's there's a balancing act there and i'm still really learning it and i'm learning it even more now than i was before so this is my elimination journey. <laughs>